I'm Jason Webb. I basically start and uh, start young horses and retrain remedial horses. So I help out those people that have horses who are giving them a bit of grief. And I also do a lot of clinics, um, lessons and courses and all that sort of thing. And I'm currently developing an online program as well. So that's a little bit about me. Um, this afternoon, what we're going to be doing is looking at spooking. And this is Podge, who one of the Your Horse readers has kindly um, lent me for this, for this demonstration this afternoon. And that's Christina. Where are you, Christina? Where'd she go? She was here. She doesn't want to. She's gone shy on me. Anyway, Christina's given me Podge. Oh, there she is. There she is. There, right there. Um, so Christine's kindly let me podge to do that, and she's had trouble with him with spooking. He's, he's a fairly nice horse. He doesn't do anything too wrong or anything like that, but, you know, he's just a little unreliable. So we're going to look at ways to help him and help Christina get over this little bit of a spooky tendency. Now, I'm going to break this down to be as, as user-friendly as possible. So you guys, when you go home, you can use all the stuff that I do. A lot, of, a lot of demonstrations and things, you'll go and see some amazing stuff and you think, how on earth did they just do that? Okay, so I wanna try and make this really simple and it starts in a building block fashion and we work our way up. I'm also, at the end of this demonstration, I'm going to, I'm gonna get a going horse, my horse, and I'm gonna bring him in and show you a little bit how more advanced horses or how you can help more advanced horses with spooking and that sort of thing. And we might even have a little bit of fun with him while we're going. Those of you that saw my, the morning demonstration will know what I mean. Okay, so to start off with, I'm gonna do a little bit of groundwork here with Podgy, sort of settled to the environment. But for me, just walking around with him, who's he thinking about? He's not thinking about me, that is for definite sure. And uh, I sort of get the feeling sometimes he'd be happy to bump into me, sometimes he'd just wander past, a little bit like that. So that's the first thing that I want to look at. I want to look at getting him to pay attention to me. So I might say, to start with, I'm going to start to get a little bit of control of his hind end. So if you're ever in a situation where you're on the ground and a horse is walking around, playing up, and all that sort of thing. Keep getting them to look at you. So let's have a little look. He's gone past me, so I'm going to... There you go, mate. Look at me. Good. We'll walk off. Okay, and while I'm doing this, I'm also teaching Podge here how to get away from pressure. Move and face up to pressure. And this is the cornerstone of teaching horses to deal with spooking. And also, I find it the cornerstone to gaining respect as well. So that's really good. So I want to be able to move him around and get him to focus on me, but also I'm teaching him to follow the rope. Okay, that's an important thing. So if I ask him to go over there, I'd like him to follow the rope and go over there. So we'll just see that he will. But if I ask him to go over there, I don't want to go over there and keep going. I want to go over there, turn around to me and say, what would you like next? So I say, please go over there. If he doesn't go, I'm going to give him a little wave with the rib and say, the, the um, rope and say, come on, hurry up, mate. I don't want it to be done in, by Christmas. I want it to be done now. And that's really important. If horses do things on their, on their terms too much, then what happens is they start to believe that they can do things as and when they want, and they don't really see you as the leader. And there's the big part of what causes spooking. You've got to be prepared to lead your horse. So I'll give you a few little tips about it. He looks amazingly calm. <laughs> I hope he does speak. Okay. So let's follow the rope over there. Good boy. Well done. That little uh, initial jump, that was a little bit of a spook. I don't want to jump, I just want him to move over there. But he's starting to realize, turn and face, he gets, I just go all passive and I relax, and he can relax. If I walk over here now, yep, he's starting to pay attention to me. I stop, he stops. Okay, if I walk in behind him, good, he's moving around. 
and another step. Good. And another step. We've got a little dance thing going on, haven't we? Okay, same on the other side. Aha, I've got a problem here. Watch this. What's my problem? I can tell you what my problem is. He won't let me down this side. Look. So now I like you on this side. You stay there. So there's two ways you can fix this problem if you ever come across it. I can keep walking. Walk the circle, walk the circle, walk the circle. Now he's starting to take over. He's just walking off. So I'll move that hind end. So don't walk away from me. Okay? He's not going to let me down that side. So I'm going to move his hind end again. Okay? Now, why won't you let me walk down that side? You need to follow the rope. There you go. Good. You've traveled forward. Now, can I come down this side? No. Okay, good. Can I come down this side this time? No. Now, this is a really important thing to correct because if I don't correct this, my horse is one-sided. Again, another big cause of spooking horses. Are you going to let me down here this time? Yes, but he's, not, he's moved away from me. So there's a slight imbalance and he's repositioned me. Okay, if he does let me down, I'm going to say, listen, it's all right. I'm coming down this side and it's fine. Good. And down this side. Okay, well done. Now, will you let me walk down there? Good. Will you follow? Follow the rope. Good lad. So just a simple little thing like that and noticing those little challenges. I can walk down this side and give my horse a pat. He'll stand. I can walk down this side, give him a pat and he'll stand, are very, very important things. And those little imbalances, they happen all the time. You as, you as trainers or as owners have to be prepared to spot those little imbalances and just correct them. And remember, I'm making the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. So when I walked down this side before, he didn't want me to go down there, so I said, that's fine, well, I'll make this side a little bit more awkward. Move. Now what do you think? And then suddenly he let me down this side and you started to realize actually he only wanted to give me a pat. That's fine. And then suddenly I've created a more balanced horse. As easy as that. Okay, you've just got to recognize those things. All right. So once we're starting to get our horse to pay attention and follow the rope, we can do some desensitizing. Now desensitizing for me is a really important tool in getting your horses less spooky. So with desensitizing, you can do it just on a lead rope as I am now, in exactly the same way that I was just doing. Or what I'm going to demonstrate is using a, my tying up device here to teach him to be less spooky. So let's have a look at how that works. If you haven't seen this work before, this, I really, really love this device. People that tie horses up traditionally tie up with string, which snaps and teaches your horse a bad habit. They sort of get there, they pull, pop. Okay, suddenly that becomes something they do. If they pull hard enough, they'll break things. Okay? Um, and other people have tie up solid so the horse can't break. But what that's going to do is create a very sore horse. Okay, and sore horses are generally unhappy horses. So well, we've got something here that, that solves both those problems. Now remember, before you tie a horse up, it's so important that you do that little exercise that I've just done there. I've taught Podge there to follow the rope or lead. Okay, I've taught him to just be calm and, and look for me, okay, if things go a little bit wrong, or follow the rope. So I'm going to put Podge here in a few scenarios that might bother him when he's tied up, and we're going to see how that the concept of pressure and release starts to work. So he's standing there perfectly calm. He's happy to be tied up. He's been such a good boy. Now what I'm going to do, we'll give him a little look, is I'm actually going to, going to do something which might give him, make him a little bit worried. So I'll just let him have a look at that, a little bit of a sniff. And I'll just check, make sure... Everything's all right. You can see how this device works in just a second. Okay, and I'm just going to give this bag a little bit of a wave. Okay, good. 
Well done. Okay, now when I do that, okay, I've had to improvise here with my tying up. When I do that, okay, I'm basically saying to Podge, listen, this might happen when you're tied up. Something scary might happen. And you can see what Podge did there. If he was tied up to a piece of string or tied up solid, there's going to be a mad panic or he's going to pull back, break the rope and head off. Okay? But as it was with that resistance device, he went, he had pressure on his pole, don't get me wrong, but when he came forward, ah, there's my release, and as he came forward, I stopped with the, with the motivation or with whatever was applying the pressure to him. Okay, so we'll do that again, we'll see how he reacts. A little bit worried, he sort of stepped forward there. And then I'll walk away again. Okay, we might even get him just to step up. Okay, a little rub. Good boy, it's all right. Seem a little, little bit braced. Still, I just want him to just un unlock. There he goes. He just unlocked. He's standing there going, oh my goodness, why am I in the right spot? I just want him to unlock and go, oh, yes, that's fine. So already there was a big change in him from the first time I did it to that time. So let's see how we go again. We'll give it a little wave around. Oh, good boy. Okay. Well done. That's all right. Okay, unlock him. Just let him realize he's in the right place. Everyone see what he did? He went, oh, my goodness. I'm going to get away from that. Oh, no, the answer wasn't there last time. Last time the answer was when I came forward. Ah, and I was right. Look, it's all gone. I'm comfortable again. Aha. He's starting to get a little bit savvy to all this. So we'll, we'll do it again. Give him a little... This time he's holding his ground. Am I all right? Okay, hold the ground. He's looking at it. He's starting to get a little bit curious, which is a good thing. And what is that? Okay. He's, he's managed to hold the ground. He wasn't relaxed about it, but he managed to hold the ground there for a little bit. What I want to do is, I want to do this until he goes, yeah, whatever, I've seen you do that three or four times, it's fine. And that's what desensitizing is all about, getting them used to their environment, okay? But everything has process. I'm not just going in waving this hard and, you know, trying to scare the life out of him, but I am doing enough to make him move, to make him react, because unless a horse moves or reacts, you are not going to teach them anything. Really, really important. Okay, so we come in again. He's taking a step away. Still look, he's got that worried look in his eye. Okay, I'll, I'll sort of count to eight or something like that. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll give him a chance again. Oh, God, thank God it's gone. Okay, but I want to repeat this process until it becomes, ah, I don't need to even brace. I don't need to get worried about this. All right, so I'll give him a little spell with that side and we'll try the other side. And again, as he gets better at this, I'm going to do more and more of it. Okay, so we'll just sneak through here. Oh, there's that scary object coming through again. Just go up and I'll say, it's just me, mate. Except sometimes I do this. Oh, that's in the other eye. My goodness, I've never seen that before. Good. Good, well done. But again, the reaction's getting less. I've tapped it. He's, oh, I've got to take, oh, it's too hard to take that rope out of that thing. I'll just come forward. And when I do come forward, actually, that thing goes away. He starts to get a bit cocky about things. He starts thinking, oh, I'm all right. I can handle this. Okay, and he's starting to calm down. He's starting to realize, actually, I'm pretty safe here. Okay, and that's what I want him to think when he's tied up. So I'll give that another little go. Something scary up there. Good. Face up to your fears, mate. There it is. I know it's a bit of a worry. Oh, good. See that little change that I got there from him? Sort of, huh? What? Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. Okay. Great. Great. And you can see from the first time I introduced it to now, you can almost see his mind working. You can almost see him starting to work this out. If I left that there now and came back tomorrow, I'd be able to come in and do a little bit more. I'd be able to come in more like this. And then I'd be able to come in waving like this. 
And he would just, yeah, whatever, I've seen it all before. But I did start steady, and I built up. Okay, so. Good boy. Well done. And you'll notice, even, even then, he didn't touch the resistance. He got back to the end of the road and thought, no, my answer's here. Brilliant. So that's, that's a concept that I want you, I can't, I won't have time to go through this to the end of the road, but it's a really important concept that I want you to understand. And if you didn't have a tie-up device and you just had, had it in your hand, I'll do that very, very quickly. Huh? Yeah. Um, where's my rope gone? There it is. So just so everybody knows the, the concept, if you haven't got one of these, and I'll tell you what, if you haven't got one, I don't want to be cheeky here, but I do sell them on my store. Um, yeah, we've all got to make a living somehow. Okay, so... Um, so what you can do is you can just do this out in the open. Now, hopefully he's seen it a little bit now and he'll be a little bit better. But all I'm looking for him is to respond in the correct way. So when he feels pressure, so here could be some pressure, he might tend to move away, although he hasn't this time. Okay? And because he hasn't moved away, I'll say, very good boy. That was really good effort. Okay? He's still got a worried look in his eye. So that can be repeated until I get rid of that worried look. Okay, let's try the other side. Okay. Get a little bit more of a reaction this side. So he's moved away. At that point, if he moves away or panics or runs, I'm going to keep going until he starts to relax. It's him resting that leg. Okay, I'd like him to lower his head a little bit or lick and chew or some of those submissive signs that horses give you. Okay, but he's held the ground there for a, pretty, for a fair while now. So I say that's a good effort. Okay, I can see you're still a little bit, oh my goodness, if I stay here, maybe he won't see me type situation. He's a little bit frozen, and that's all right. If they are a little bit frozen, I can check that. I can say, right, I'm going to wave this. Yep, you're on the move now. So I haven't, and now I, it's because he's moved off and I haven't asked him to. Look, how my, look at my demeanor, my rope. Everything about me is quite relaxed, isn't it? Even though I'm, I could be shaking the bag, but me, myself, I'm calm. Okay. You're happy? I'm happy. Very good. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here. When you're going to introduce something scary to a horse, do not just go, oh, look, he's standing still now, I'm fine, and bring it and place it on his neck because he's going to panic. You come inside what I call a kill zone. From about here on a horse, see that? From about here on a horse, they can't escape and attack. So they do their... They do their very best to get away from it. They'll kick, strike, run, do anything. Okay? A good way to introduce something scary to a horse, like a bag or something, is to give them a sniff. So that's what it is. Little pat up the eye, over and down there like that. It's going, oh my God, that thing's on me now. Okay? But I've gone through a natural gateway to the horse's body, the nose. Okay? So there, oh my goodness, there it is again. Sniff, up through, just over his eyes. I don't want to go near his ears because that's a bit of a sensitive spot. If something was going to grab him, that would be it. And I'm on the body. And notice there was no flinching, no panic, no worries. So that's something that's really important. Okay, so that's desensitizing on the ground. And there's, there's loads of other stuff you can do with that. But you keep working away at that.